Good morning. Today is Wednesday, August 3rd, and I'm Carmen Blackwell with your 3 News Now morning update. Thank you for spending just a few minutes with me on the WKYC YouTube page. We start you off this morning with Jason and a quick check of today's weather forecast. Hey there, Carmen. Good morning to you and happy Wednesday morning, everybody. We got a lot to discuss here in that forecast for today. It first begins with the heat across the area. We do have a couple counties under a heat advisory area and also Huron counties as well, but we begin the morning in the 60s widespread. A few upper 50s expected there in our northeastern regions, but you can see here on the uh, Euro uh, rainfall forecast, we're expecting scattered showers and thunderstorms to be a little bit all over the map today. So every person will likely at least get a quarter of an inch of rainfall here with higher amounts down towards the south. Here's your national design more hour by hour forecast. As we make our way through the heart of our Wednesday, you'll notice that heat is going to be looming across the area as well. Then a fine line of thunderstorms will be moving through, and I think we're likely going to have some really high uh, gusty winds as well associated with this. As of right now, heat index values will like to be around the century mark as well. Scattered showers and thunderstorms will cut our temperatures back, likely into the mid to low 80s as that uh, frontal boundary will be moving through. That continues through about 10, 11 p.m. for this evening, and then we turn the faucet off. We'll have moderate conditions overall overnight tonight through early tomorrow morning, upper 60s, low 70s expected with light showers to begin us out on our Thursday. Then we get into a very unsettled weather pattern with our next frontal boundary arriving 24 hours from now into the afternoon. That'll be coming in the form of a cold front. It is not going to cool us off too much though. We'll be in the 80s for the next several days here, but scattered showers and thunderstorms will likely be happening again once we make our way through Thursday evening and even into Friday. Overall, prepare for rainfall each and every day off and on. Drought monitor comes out on Thursday, so we do have some drought conditions there. You can see over towards our eastern counties for the most part. Today's warmest temperature, 93 degrees expected. As we get past today, 80s expected. The weekend, a little bit of isolated thunderstorms expected there as well. We go cut our temperatures back into the mid to low 80s on Friday, mid to upper 80s Saturday and Sunday. But we begin next week in the low 80s with chance showers and isolated thunderstorms. Carmen? Jason, thank you. Jury deliberations resumed today for the woman accused of killing Cleveland police officer Shane Bartek. 19 year old Tamara McCloyd pleaded not guilty to charges of aggravated murder and felonious assault and other charges. Prosecutors say McCloyd shot officer Bartek during a carjacking and robbery on New Year's Eve. The two year veteran was off duty when he was approached at an apartment complex on Rocky River Drive. She fires first in the air, like so, and her second shot towards Shane Bartek's back. A, that proves purpose. These are not reckless shots. These are not accidental shots. One, two. Jury deliberations begin today at 9 a.m. And if convicted, McCloyd faces anywhere from 20 years up to life behind bars. We will have the latest updates on the 3 News app and on WKYC.com. And now to an update to the Tiedemann Road motorcycle crash on Monday night. The driver of the motorcycle has died due to his injuries. Parma police tried to pull over 25 year old James Meadows for not having a plate on his motorcycle when he sped away and crashed into a vehicle exiting 480 West. The driver of the other vehicle suffered only minor injuries. Brooklyn police will be investigating the crash and it's still unknown if drugs or alcohol were involved. And a Canton man has pled guilty to charges in his role in the Capitol riot. 55 year old John Douglas Wright was facing felony charges of obstruction of an official proceeding. Wright faces fines and a minimum or a maximum rather of 20 years in prison. He will be sentenced in federal court on November 28th. In Bowling Green Tuesday, BGSU hosted the first Ohio anti-hazing summit. It has or was a chance to discuss how academic institutions across the state can improve hazing prevention efforts and also develop new strategies to prevent it. New measures in the BGSU Community of Care Action Plan included an appointment of a hazing prevention coordinator, simplified reporting procedures, and better bystander awareness. The university will also focus on stronger cooperation with 
law enforcement, a strict anti-hazing policy, and better communication with students, faculty, staff, and families. I think the folks in this room are absolutely the right people to begin with. Uh, but are they uh, the entire community? Absolutely not. This is the group that certainly is instituting practices and the education and the reporting and the outreach on their various campuses. But it is a community issue. Bowling Green has been at the forefront of hazing prevention after the death of Stone Foltz last spring. The university, along with the Ohio Department of Education, have introduced new measures like the passage of Collins Law and the formation of the Inter-University Council of Ohio's anti-hazing principles by its Council of Presidents. Now we take you to the latest from Capitol Hill. The PACT Act has passed the Senate. The $280 billion package will provide expanded health care benefits for veterans that were exposed to burn pits in Iraq and Afghanistan. A final vote came in the Senate last night after years of efforts by veterans groups, their families, and even comedian John Stewart. If I'm a young person and I'm watching this, and I see a commercial about be all you can be and go over and, and be in the military, and then I see what happens to people when they come back. That's not a job I sign up for. President. Well, the bill now heads to President Biden's desk for his signature. And it's the first time since the overturn of Roe versus Wade that voters in the United States have cast ballots on abortion. In Kansas, just yesterday, a constitutional amendment was on the ballot seeking to end abortion protections within the state. But voters turned it down, leaving Kansas as one of the few red states where abortion is legal. Getting into some consumer news for you today, Amazon at the center of a federal investigation. Federal safety regulators are visiting warehouses in multiple states as part of an ongoing probe. That's according to a document seen by CNBC. Amazon tells the network that it's cooperating with officials and intends to disprove the government's safety concerns. Lions Magnus has also recalled over 50 products due to a potential microbial contamination. They produce beverage products under their own name, as well as Oatly, Glucerna, and Premier Protein. The FDA said the products did not sterile uh, enough to be on the shelves, but you can call the Lions Magnus number on your screen with any questions that you may have and return any products to the place of purchase for a full refund. Well, thank you for taking the time to join me for this 3 News Now morning update. Our digital team will continue to bring you the stories making headlines around Northeast Ohio and the world. But in the meantime, please make sure that you continue to check out our social media pages and WKYC.com for the latest throughout the day. I'm Carmen Blackwell, and I'll see you tomorrow morning right here on GO, starting right at 430. Have a great day.